Good morning, Venezuela Senior High School learners. I'm Miss Lorena Ral, your Venezuela FB live streaming teacher for this week. Welcome to our new episode in the Media and Information Literacy. We are now in week 10 and we will learn the power of media and information. So, join me and let us study the power and impact of media information literacy to your life. We are guided for today's K-12 Most Essential Learning Competencies for Week 10, which is to cite an example of an issue showing the power of media information to affect change. And at the end of the lesson, you should be able to identify the different opportunities, challenges, and power of media information in terms of the following. Letter A, economic educational, social, and political. And letter B, the threats, risk, abuse, and misuse. Before we proceed to our today's topic, let us recall what have you learned from the previous lesson, which is about the identification of the different issues in media and information. I will show you a short video clips and what you will do is to analyze what you have been watched and then recall what is the corresponding does it related on the issues in media and information. Then, write your answer in our comment box. You can also use a hint word using the jumbled letters. Okay? So, let us start the first video clip. For the first video clip, it denotes the proper attitude that one should observe when communicating online, whether one is talking to someone through a video conference, instant messaging, email, or chat. Internet user should remain polite at all times. Again, you can use our hint word. And then, you can write your answer in our comment box. Okay, so what do you think is the answer? So if you write netiquette, you have the right answer. Okay, so let's proceed with our second video clip. So this, it refers to the economic, educational, and social inequalities experienced by those who cannot afford to have computer and internet access. And it also refers to a difference in access to technology between nations, regions, and based on demographic factors such as income, race, and age. So, you can write down your answer in our comment box. Okay, so if we answer digital divide, you have the right answer. Okay, so let's proceed with our video clip number three. In these modern times, more and more people are being inclined in social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. They tend to neglect their responsibilities and more important needs due to their obsession with such a social networking sites. This habit can result to various consequences like computer addiction and vulnerability to online crimes. So what do you think is our answer? Again, write down your answer in our comment box. Okay, so if you answer dangers of the internet, you have again the correct answer. There you have it guys, I'm sure. It already refreshes your mind from our previous lesson. You are now ready to our lesson for week 10. But before we start, let's have a short game. It is entitled Hashtag Game. So trivia, hashtag games are live events that take place on Twitter created by individuals who want to share their hashtag with the world. People drop their hashtags on Twitter and the fun begins. Think of the hashtag as the premise or topic. 
It is a call to action and a challenge to add your creative idea to that hashtag. So how do you play hashtag games? So how, uh, what will you do is to simply guess the posted picture and think as many as you can an appropriate or suited hashtag word based on the popular hashtag associated with them and then write your answer in the comment box. I am only giving you five seconds to answer it. So, are you ready, keyboard warriors? Let us start the hashtag game. For the hashtag game number one, so the term first appeared during the 2008 financial crisis to refer impacting collective perception and individual lifestyles. So this term has been used again during the COVID-19 pandemic to point out how it has completely invested and transformed and debatable pivots of human life, such as professional identity, economic subsistence, work and family organization, children's education management, imposing a radical revision of the traditional ways, practices, and skills used to manage them. Okay, keyboard warriors, timer starts now. Okay, time's up. If you answered hashtag new normal, you have the right answer. Okay, so let's see with our hashtag game number two. So this pandemic has caused drastic changes to populations across the globe. To control the transmission of this lethal disease, societies have halted majority of economic activities and permitted at most only the most essential activities such as those related to food and health. Okay? Keyboard warriors, timer starts now. Okay, if you answered hashtag COVID-19, you are definitely right. Okay, so next we have hashtag game number three. It is a public affair short air by GMA Network in English term, One at Heart Jessica Soho. Hosted by multi-awarded broadcast journalist Jessica Soho. The show presents different fun and fascinating stories on current events, pop culture, celebrities, health, and internet trends. Okay? So, what do you think is our answer? Keyboard warriors, timer starts now. Okay, if you answered hashtag Kapusumo Jessica So or hashtag KMJS Muna, so you have a definitely a right answer. Okay, so next we have hashtag game number four. Her real name is Daisy Cabantog again. Meet her on Instagram. Daisy Cabantog is a Cabitan native from Amadeo. Daisy got well known for her Facebook selling. She is well known for her Facebook-based internet retailing. Okay, keyboard warriors. Timer starts now. Okay, time's up. If you answered hashtag Madam Inuts, you have the right answer. Okay, for the last one, hashtag game number five. The year 2022 is shaping up to be a tougher year. But many Filipinos are pinning their hopes on the changes that the upcoming presidential election will bring. The election scheduled for May 9 will give the country a new president, vice president, 12 senators, and a new term for local officials. Okay? Keyboard warriors, you have five seconds. Timer starts now. Okay, so if you answered hashtag election 2022, 
you have a right answer. Okay, so we're now on our week 10, the power of media and information. When a photo or video becomes viral, what does this entail? So when something goes viral on social media, it means that internet users have widely and rapidly shared such as photo, video, or comment online. Media and information literacy provides the backbone to understanding media and the role of media in our society. MIL also provides some of the essential skills necessary for critical thinking, analysis, self-expression, and creativity. All necessary skills for citizens in a democratic society. Okay? So, we have a what we call people media. So, people media refers to persons that are involved in the use, analysis, evaluation, and production of media and information. People media consists of people who communicate certain information towards an audience and those who appear in different kinds of media such as TV, radio, and print media for the same purpose. We have a two categories of people media and these are the following. Number one, people as media and number two, people in media. So what is the difference between people as media and people in media? So let us define first the people as media. So people as media are people who are well-oriented to media sources and messages and able to provide information such as accurate and reliable as possible. So we have different examples of people as media. Number one, we have what we call opinion leaders. So they are highly exposed and actively using media. They are also the source of viable interpretation of messages for lower end media users. Opinions here are accepted by a group. Again, that is opinion leaders. Another example of people as media is what we call citizen journalism. So citizen journalism are the people without professional journalism training can use the tools of modern technology and internet to create augment or fact check media on their own community such as websites, blogs, and social media. So we have what we call citizen journalism. Another example of people as media is what we call social journalism. Journalists are using social media to make their content available to more people. Social journalism consists of a hybrid of professional journalism, contributor, and reader content. So we have again what we call social journalism. Another example of people as media is what we call crowdsourcing. The practice of obtaining needed services, ideas, or content by soliciting contributions from a large group of people and especially from the online community. Many companies and organizations use dedicated crowdsourcing sites like 99designs or Fiverr to find solutions to niche tasks like graphic design, proofreading, or software testing elsewhere, businesses look to social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to gather ideas for new products and services. So that's what we call crowdsourcing. So another example of people as media are Facebook user, movie director, college professor, etc. Perhaps the most influential social media tool is social networking sites. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Blogger, LinkedIn, and Google Plus are all familiar names to the large majority of society. Active social media user or not, 
Almost everyone from the ages of 13 to 64 has a Facebook account. So these social networking sites can be used to connect people worldwide. So this means that mis uh, business meetings can be conducted internationally via Google Hangouts or old friends can reconnect. For businesses, schools, and various other groups, the communications possibilities are endless. Okay? So, we're already done with people as media. Let's proceed with number two. We have what we call people in media. So, people in media are media practitioners who provide information coming from their expert knowledge or first-hand experience of the event. People who work in the media should be respectable and trustworthy. They should deliver factual and accurate information because people rely on what the media says, whether in newspaper, on television, or over the radio. People in media hold a great responsibility because they cater to a bigger audience through different media. They are channeled through. They should have not only the necessary expertise in the field that they are specializing in, but also skill for proper communication. So that is what we call the people in media. So we have different types of journalists by media. The first one, we have what we call print journalists. The second one, we have what we call photo journalists. And the third one, we have broadcast journalists. And the last one, we have what we call multimedia journalists. So, next we have the what we call influence, uh, uh, influence and power of media. Anything that goes viral on the internet becomes an instant trending and popular topic. So these are concrete examples of how media can influence the economy, education, society, and politics. Social media is defined by its interactivity, connectedness, and user-generated content. In today's society, the use of social media has become necessary daily activity. Social media is typically used for social interaction, and access to news and information, and also decision-making. It is also a valuable communication tool with others locally and worldwide, as well as to share, create, and spread information. Social media can influence consumers' purchase decisions through reviews, marketing tactics, and advertising. Essentially, social media vastly impacts our ability to communicate, form relationships, access, spread information, and to arrive at the best decision. Okay, so let's take a look with the power of media and information in terms of our economy. So we have a what we call online selling phenomenon. Economy is an area of the production, distribution, and trade as well as consumption of goods and services by different agents. Online business is any kind of business activity that happens over the internet. Running an online business can include buying and selling online or providing an online service. In the past, people had to personally monitor the stock market. However, nowadays, they can monitor their investment in real time by logging in at the website of the stock exchange. With various social media like Twitter and Facebook, a businessman can easily receive notifications about local and global news which could affect his investments. Different media platforms also allow government agencies to improve their services. Okay, so that's the power of media in terms of our economy. Another, we have a what we call online shopping sites. Social media tools have become the new must-have tool in the marketing world. Digital and internet marketing are on the rise. And those with no presence on social media will slowly become extinct. Entrepreneurs and small business owners 
are beginning to rally on social media sites to spread the word about their companies. Internet marketing at this point is almost syn uh, synonymous with social media because it is almost guaranteed to reach the largest audience and produce the greatest effects. The future of the marketing world promises to be shaped by social media. So that's the power of media and information in terms of our economy. Next, we have also our society. Example of that are blogger and social influencers. Over the last decade, we have seen social media grow rapidly in importance. More than 3.4 billion people actively use social media and that 45% of the world's population. Inevitably, these people look up to influencers in social media to guide them with their decision making. Influencers in social media are people who have built a reputation for their knowledge and expertise on a specific topic. They make a regular posts about that topic on their preferred social media channels and generate large following of enthusiastic, engaged people who pay close attention to their views, brands, local social media influencers, because they can create trends and encourage their followers to buy products they promote. Kong TV, Ivana Alawi, Alex Gonzaga, Chinkitan, and some popular artists are social influencers in our country. Okay, so next we have in terms of our education, we have what we call online or distance learning. So this refers to learning delivery modality where learning takes place between the teacher and the learners who are geographically remote from each other during instruction. This modality has three types. Modular distance learning or MDL, online distance learning or ODL, and TV radio-based instruction. So in the Philippines, the Department of Education has applied distance learning modalities to ensure learning continuity, which involve technology and internet connection. So this way, students can continue their education in remote setups through online or offline platforms, TV and radio and printed modules. Okay, so next we have the politics or the governance of our country. Politics, the activities associated with the governance of a country or other area, especially the debate or conflict among individuals or parties having or hoping to achieve power. The power of media and information is strong and wide enough to reach all the people from different fields. As information has become easily accessible using the internet, the profile, and other intimate personal details about the public servant or a politician leader can easily leak and shared online. While these pieces of information can help citizens assess the kind of leader they should vote for, this can also violate their polit uh, politician's privacy. Okay, so let's proceed with the threats and risks from the abuse and misuse of the media and information. The Article 3 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution is about the Bill of Rights. Section 4 specifically states that no law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech, of expression, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government for redress of grievances. So what does it mean? So it means that as a democratic country, all citizens are entitled to freedom of expression and the state ought to protect that constitutional right. Due to this, we are free to express our ideas and beliefs through writing, speaking, or demonstrating without any fear of being sued. Despite of this, we should never abuse or misuse our freedom of speech. We also need to take into consideration the rights and feelings of other people. 
So thus, freedom of expression does not give us the permission to hurt others because that is a violation against the right as well. Next, we have the what we call the libel. So libel in the Philippine Constitution, libel is a violation of Article 355 of the Revised Penal Code. As stated in this article, libel can be committed in writing, printing, and other similar means. A person commits libel if he publishes in public, either in print or online, anything that is deemed malicious or vice or defect, real or imaginary, or any act, omission, condition, status, or circumstance tending to cause dishonor, discredit, or contempt of a natural or judicial person, or blacken the memory of one who is dead. In addition, writing should arise from an honest opinion, be free from malice and aims to serve public interest. So that is what we call the libel. Next, we have what we call slander. According to Article 358 of the Revised Penal Code, slander refers to a malicious act of spreading untrue statements about someone or something else in a way that is intended to cause harm. Example of slander is calling someone names or saying derogatory remarks about a person is considered as slanderous. Next, we have a what we call anti-obscenity law. According to Article 201 of the Revised Penal Code, as amended by Presidential Decree Number 960, a material would be a violation to the anti-obscenity law if it includes immoral doctrines, obscene publication, or exhibition and indecent shows. Materials that have glorifying criminals or condoning their crimes, promote violence, lust or pornography, offense or race or religion, promotes the use of drugs, and encourage acts contrary to law, public orders, morals, good customs, establishes policies, lawful orders, decrees, and edicts also violate the anti-obscenity law. Next, we have a what we call sedition. So it pertains to subversive acts such as a rebellion and insurrection which incite people to go against the government and resist its local authority and jurisdiction. According to Article 138 of the Revised Penal Code, any person who is found to be inciting a rebellion shall be penalized because this will endanger the security, safety, and stability of the state. So that's what we call sedition. Next, we have a what we call contempt of court. So I explained in section number 1, rule 71 of the rules of the court, contempt of court refers to disobedience to the court where a person exhibited acts of opposing the court's authority, justice, and dignity. Next, we have a what we call piracy. So some people buy pirated copies of albums and films instead of purchasing the original ones because those are cheaper and more practical for them. However, piracy is considered illegal under the Philippine law. Piracy is the unauthorized distribution and reproduction of a copyrighted materials. It is also a violation of anti comforting Act of 2010 or Republic Act 10888. So that is piracy. Okay, there you have it, guys. Let's find out what you have learned for today's lesson. We have what we call people as media and people in media. So they are categories of people media that refers to persons that are involved in the use, analysis, evaluation and production of media and information. And we also learn the different opportunities, challenges, and power of media information in terms of A, economic, 
educational, social, and political. And letter B, the threats, the risk, abuse, and misuse. Okay, so there you have it, guys. Let's check how well you remember from our today's lesson, which is about the power of media and information. Again, you can write down your answer in our comment box. I am giving you five seconds to answer each question. So, are you ready, guys? Let, uh, let us start with the question number one. So, question number one. So, which of the following refers to the governance of a country or other areas? Is it A, economy, B, education, C, politics, or D, society? Okay, so you have five seconds to answer. Okay, time's up. So, if you answered letter C, it's politics, you got it right. Okay, next we have quiz number two. So, what violation in the Philippine Constitution of Article 355 of the Revised Penal Code that can be committed in writing, printing, and other similar means? Is it A, anti-obscenity law, B, libel, C, sedition, or D, slander? So, you have five seconds to answer. Okay, so if you answered letter B, so it's libel, you got it right. Okay, next question number three. So which of the following pertains to an area of the production, distribution, and trade, as well as consumption of goods and services by different agents? Is it A, economy, B, education, C, politics, or D, society? Okay, you have five seconds to answer. Write down your answer in our comment box. Okay, so if you type letter A, economy, you got a point. Okay, next we have question number four. So which of the following refers to a group of individuals involved in persistent social interaction or a large social group sharing the same spatial or social territory? Typically subject to the same political authority and dominant cultural expectations. Is it A, economy, B, education, C, politics, or D, society? Okay, timer starts now. Okay, so if you answered letter D, so you are definitely right. Next, and the last one, we have number five. Which of the following does Dr. Rosarizal was charged of this case that pertains to subversive acts such as rebellion and insurrection, which incite people to go against the government and resist its lawful authority and jurisdiction? Is it A, anti-obscenity law, B, libel, C, sedition, or D, slander? Okay, so you have five seconds to answer. So, if you type letter C, sedition, you are absolutely correct. There you have it, guys. Like, share, post, comment, chat, blog, among others, is something what to do now in media. Media and information are very important to our everyday lives. In using the media, we must follow some rules and etiquettes. Information is powerful, but we must not abuse it. We must turn ourselves as responsible users. So, this has been your media and information literacy teacher. I'm Ms. Lorena General, saying stay safe and be healthy and goodbye.